January can be a really frustrating time for PR people. It's a time when you wish your clients would get back from holidays so that you could start implementing those news stories you talked about at the end of the year prior. I mean, the thing about news is that it's competitive. There are winners and losers every day in trying to promote medical news stories. And the thing about January is that the competition is just so much less. The politicians are still on holidays. It's a non-rating period. I mean, you can pick up The Australian in January and find stories on page three about Shane Warne uh, involved in some silly bit of road rage with some bicycle rider. I mean, it's a time when you really should be trying to take advantage of the lessened competition. So how do you take advantage? I think there are three key things. First, plan early. January is not a time to be trying to find talent at the last moment with people still on holidays and uncontactable. You know that January is a good news opportunity every year. So the planning should start in the middle of the year prior. Second, think about seasonal opportunities. January is a time of New Year's resolutions. So what else is happening at this time? So what kind of health and medical themes fit within the topic of resolutions? Things like losing weight, drinking less, eating differently, exercising are all good fodder for news stories during January. And then thirdly, think about the context. What else is happening in January? Children are planning to go back to school and parents are getting them ready for that. Might there be a chance to build a story around infection control at school, or sun protection at school, or maybe even allergies? He's delighted children all over the world as the Blue Wiggle. And now Anthony Field is taking on a new role, teaching kids and adults alike about the dangers of allergies as a spokesperson for Anaphylaxis Australia. And he and his son Antonio joined me here this morning. Very good morning to you both. Good morning, yeah. And Antonio suffered a very severe allergic reaction to nuts when he was younger. That must have been harrowing for you. Oh, absolutely. The, the, the uh, best thing to do is, is uh, education. While we're on the subject of timing, clients often ask me which day of the week they should focus on when planning their media launches. And there's no real simple answer to that. Although I would suggest that it is worth giving special consideration to Monday. I mean, Monday is a day where the newspapers are full of content derived from a day on which people are not generally working, that is, the day prior. Uh, and it is also true to say that there are occasions where news does tend to build from the early part of the week to the later part of the week. So the competition can be a little less on the Monday. I mean, someone who's a master of this is Richard Branson. And whenever he comes to Australia and stages those photographs of him with unbelievably attractive models or beautifully attired flight attendants, uh, that's often done on the Sunday with a view to getting those photos into the Monday newspapers. And then they let the rest of the publicity and the rest of the media relations campaign roll out from there. So Sunday for Monday is a tactic that can work really well and lessen the competition for news. And another group who do it very well is the PR team at the Medical Journal of Australia. I mean, the MJA finds its way into the public domain on Mondays, and so they're very well practiced at the Sunday for Monday activity. Uh, watch it the next time it comes out. They do a particularly good job. The general point about timing is this. News promotion is competitive, and one way of maximising your chances of success is to focus on a time when the competition is less. Now that can be a quiet time of the week or indeed a quiet time of the year. My personal favourite is the exclusively negotiated newspaper story for the Monday morning with all of the television filming and the radio interviews following up during the day and then having the rest of the publicity plan roll out during the remainder of that week. And I think it's even better when that whole package can be pulled together in the middle of January. Palin Communications is where evidence-based PR drives health-related change. So if you're looking to really shake up the sector in which you're operating, or you're looking for some support on media relations or product launches, issues management or stakeholder management, we'd love to hear from you. And if you need to find out some more information or you want to look at some case studies, go and check out palin.com.au.